Alexander by Walter Delamere, read for LibriVox.org by Jason Ivey. It was the great Alexander, capped with the golden helm, sate in the ages in his floating ship in a dead calm. Voices of sea maids singing wandered across the deep. The sailors laboring on their oars rode as in sleep. All the high pomp of Asia Charmed by that siren lay, Out of their weary, dreaming minds, Faded away. Like a boy, sate their captain, His glamour withered and gone, In the souls of brooding mariners, While the song pinned on. Time, like a falling dew, Life, like the scene of a dream, Laid between slumber and slumber, Only did seem. O oh, Alexander, then, and all us mortals too, wax not so overbold on the wave's dark blue. Come the calm starry night, who then will hear, ought to save the singing of the sea maids clear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Arrow and the Song by Henry Watford Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Caio Varalta I shot an arrow into the air It fell to earth, I knew not where For so swiftly it flew The sight could not follow it in its flight I breathed a song into the air It fell to earth, I knew not where for who has sight so keen and strong that it can follow the flight of song? Long, long afterward, in an oak, I found the arrow still unbroke, and the song, from beginning to end, I found again in the heart of a friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ballad by Thomas Hood, read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. It was not in the winter our loving lot was cast, it was the time of roses, we plucked them as we passed. That churlish season never frowned on early lovers yet, oh no, the world was newly crowned with flowers when first we met. Twas twilight, and I bade you go, but still you held me fast. It was the time of roses, we plucked them as we passed. What else could peer thy glowing cheek that tears began to stud? And when I asked the like of love, you snatched a damask bud and oped it to the dainty core, still glowing to the last. It was the time of roses, we plucked them as we passed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Beginning of the New Century by Frederick Schiller Read for LibriVox.org The Beginning of the New Century to XXX where shall we find a refuge noble friend for peace and freedom on this troubled earth the century in tumult has its end and murder dogs the new one at its birth burst are the links uniting land with land and ancient dignities and forms decline the rush of war the sea cannot withstand now cannot stem it nor the hoary rhine two mighty nationalities contend for the supreme possession of the world others their hopes of freedom may suspend while thunderbolts and tridents here are hurled for them must every land its gold afford and as did brennus in his ruder day so does the frank his heavy iron sword throw in the even balance to outweigh the breton spreads his all-pervading fleet its greedy tentacles abroad are thrown 
Amphitrite's domain he would estreat, and claim the whole of ocean for his own. To unseen regions of the southern pole his never-wearied footsteps he directs. All shores and islands he would fain control, and paradise alone he still respects. No map or chart there is, alas, I ween, in which that happy country we shall find, where freedom's garden is forever green, and youth perennial adorns mankind. In boundless range the world before thee lies, even the shipping thou canst scarce compute, yet on its platform of unstinted size for elbow room some dozen must dispute in the calm sanctuary of the heart fly to a refuge from this earthly throng dreamland alone true freedom can impart and beauty only flourishes in song end of poem this recording is in the public domain a boat beneath a sunny sky by lewis carroll read for LibriVox.org by Kai Varalta. A boat beneath a sunny sky, lingering onward dreamily in an evening of July. Children three, the nestling near, eager eye and willing ear, pleased a simple tale to hear. Long has paled the sunny sky, echoes fade and memories die. Autumn frosts have slain July. Still she haunts me, phantomwise, Alice moving under skies, never seen by waking eyes. Children yet, the tale to hear, eager eye and willing ear, lovingly shall nestle near. In a wonderland they lie, dreaming as the days go by, dreaming as the summers die. Ever drifting down the stream, lingering in the golden gleam, Life, what is it but a dream? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Break, Break, Break by Alfred Tennyson. Read for LibriVox.org by Kai Varout. Break, Break, Break on thy cold grey stones, O oh sea. And I would that my tongue could utter the thoughts that rise in me. Oh well for the fisherman's boy that he shouts with his sister at play. Oh well for the sailor lad that he sings in his boat in the bay. And stately ships go on to the haven under the hill. But oh for the touch of a vanished hand and the sound of a voice that is still. Break, break, break at the foot of thy crags, O oh sea. But the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to me. End of poem. The recording is in the public domain. Charity's Eye by William Rounsville Alger. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Charity's Eye. One evening, Jesus lingered in the marketplace teaching the people parables of truth and grace when in the square remote a crowd was seen to rise and stop with loathing gestures and abhorring cries the master and his meek disciples went to see what cause for this commotion and disgust could be and found a poor dead dog beside the gutter laid revolting sight at which each face its hate betrayed one held his nose one shut his eyes one turned away and all among themselves began to say detested creature he pollutes the earth and air his eyes are blear his ears are foul his ribs are bare in his torn hide there's not a decent shoestring left no doubt the execrable cur was hung for theft then jesus spake and dropped on him the saving wreath even pearls are dark before the whiteness of his teeth the pelting crowd grew silent and ashamed like one rebuked by sight of wisdom higher than his own 
and one exclaimed no creature so accursed can be but some good thing in him a loving eye will see end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dark by ellen m h gates read for LibriVox.org by ian king i am the dark the ancient one before the days and years begun i hovered formless silent cold and filled the void no page unrolled makes mention of my timeless reign no rock on mountain top or plain by scar or symbol now can tell the secrets that i know so well i am the dark the first to be my own beginning baffles me i seemed a thing apart forgot which was because the light was not i dwelt with chaos place i kept as atom unto atom crept till order stood with sinews set and law with law like brothers met i am the dark for still i stay with half my kingdom wrenched away there came an hour when all the black a filmy screen was folded back above me through me everywhere were scarlet streaks and golden glare and mighty winds began to blow the trailing mist wreaths to and fro i am the dark the eye that sees the midnight moons and pleiades must wait for me i claim the sky to show the splendours swinging high in space so deep and wide and black that thought itself comes trembling back the sun may show the sea and sod but i the far-off fields of god i am the dark my paths i keep no hour too soon the light may creep above the hills no moment late the sun may reach the western gate the shadows are my own their wings they spread above all breathing things till joy and pain and more and less are one in sleep's unconsciousness i am the dark the underworld with soundless rivers onward world is mine alone and mine the lakes o'er which the morning never breaks i dwell in caverns vast unknown whose walls are wrought from primal stone there silence death and i can wait creation's grim triumvirate i am the dark and forth and back as god's own servant robed in black i go and come his dead i keep within my chambers while they sleep who knows my doom perhaps at last i may be ended outward cast from all that is my deepest night invaded by resistless light End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dove's Loneliness by George Darley. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Break not my loneliness, O wanderer. There's nothing sweet but melancholy here. Mid these dim walks and grassy winds are seen no gaudy flowers undarkening the green. No wanton bird chirrups from tree to tree, Not a disturber of the woods but me. Scarce in a summer doth a wild bee come To wake my sylvan echo with his hum. But for my weeping lullaby I have the everlasting cadence of the wave That falls in little breakers on the shore, And rather seems to strive to roar than roar. Light zephyr, too, spreads out his silver wings On each green leaf, and in a whisper sings his love to every blossom in her ear too low 
too soft too sweet for me to hear the soul of peace breathes a wide calm around and hallows for her shrine this sacred spot of ground her bird am i and rule the shade for her a timid guard and trembling minister my cradling palace hung amid the leaves of a wide swaying beech a woodbine weaves fine spinster of the groves my canopy of purpling trellis and embroidery my pendant chair lined with the velvet green that nature clothes her russet children in moss of the silkiest thread this is my throne here i do sit queen of the woods alone and as the winds come swooning through the trees i join my murmurs to their melodies murmurs of joy for i am pleased to find no visitors more constant than the wind my heart beats high at every step you come near the bosom of my woodland home and blame me not if when you turn away i wish that to some other scenes you'd stray some brighter lovelier scenes these are too sad too still and deepen into deeper shade see the gay hillocks on the neighboring shore nodding their tufted crowns invite the oar the daisy winks and the pale cowslip throws her jealous looks askant red burns the rose spare hawthorn all her glittering wealth displays stars blossoms buds and hangs them in the blaze to lure thine eye the slope as fresh and sweet spreads her lush carpet to entice thy feet here are but weeds and a few sorry gems scattered upon the straggling woodbine stems hoar trees and withered fern ah stranger go i would not stay to make thee tremble so were i a man and thou a little dove i would at thy least prayer at once remove then stranger turn and shouldst thou hear me coo from this deep bosomed wood a hoarse adieu the secret satisfaction of my mind that thou art gone and i am left behind smile thou and say farewell the bird of peace hope innocence and love and loveliness thy sweet egerious bird of birds doth pray by the name best beloved thou'lt wend thy way in pity of her pain though i know well thou wouldst not harm me i must tremble still my heart's the home of fear ah turn thee then and leave me to my loneliness again End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dragonfly by Edna St. Vincent Millay. Read for LibriVox.org by David Starner. I wound myself in a white cocoon of singing, all day long in the brook's uneven bed, measuring out my soul in a mucus thread. Dimly now to the brook's green bottom clinging, men behold me, a worm spun out and dead, walled in an iron house of silky singing. Nevertheless, at length, O oh reedy shallows, not as a plodding nose to the slimy stem, but as a brazen wing with a spangled hem. Over the jewel-weed and the pink marshmallows, free of these and making a song of them, I shall arise in a song of the reedy shallows. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Figure by Maxwell Bodenheim. Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. Through the turbulent servility of a churlish city street, he strides opaquely nothing in his walk resembles an advancing gleam his legs are muffled iron stubbornly following even thoughts his gaily pugnacious head seems worried because no dread remains for it to slay his eyes hold an austerity that recalls itself while leaping and often melts into amusement the bent poise of his body tells of walls that threw him back only to crumble underneath the stunned friendliness of his face 
through the angularly churlish street he walks and stoops beneath the captured weight of eyes that do not see him end of poem this recording is in the public domain fog by carl sandberg read for LibriVox.org by winston tharp the fog comes in on little cat feet it sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on end of poem this recording is in the public domain If I Should Die by Emily Dickinson, 1830 to 1886, read for LibriVox.org by Amy Kiner on 23 April 2017 at poets.org. If I should die and you should live, and time should gurgle on, and morn should beam and noon should burn, as it has done, if birds should build as early and bees a bustling go, one might depart at option from enter pies below. Tis it sweet to know that stocks will stand when we with daisies lie, that commerce will continue and trades as briskly fly. It makes the parting tranquil and keeps the soul serene, that gentlemen so sprightly conduct the pleasing scene. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Remember, I Remember by Thomas Hood Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp I remember, I remember the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. He never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember the roses, red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs where the robin built and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday. The tree is living yet. I remember, I remember where I was used to swing, and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing. My spirit flew in feathers then, that is so heavy now, and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. I remember, I remember the fir trees dark and high. I used to think their slender tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now tis little joy to know I'm farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. June by Mary Weston Fordham. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I am the month when roses bloom brightest o'er the glade. I am the month when marriages most happily are made. Mine is the time of foliage, when hills and valleys teem with buds and vines sweet-scented, all clothed in glowing green. My nights are bright and starry, my days are long and clear, and truly I'm the fairest of all months in the year. With night dews gently falling, with bees upon the wing, and tiny rills soft rippling amid the valleys sing. The farmer with his ploughshare, swift turning up the sod, his brawny arms at labour, his soul with nature's god. The lark with sweetest carol doth greet the rising sun, the mock bird at the even, loud whistles day is done. Oh, I'm the month of beauty, the summer's crown I claim. Now, whisper to me softly, and tell me what's my name. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Leave Taking by Louise Bogan Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. I do not know where either of us can turn just at first, waking from the sleep of each other. I do not know how we can bear the river struck by the gold 
plummet of the moon or many trees shaken together in the darkness we shall wish not to be alone and that love were not dispersed and set free though you defeat me and i be heavy upon you but like the earth heaped over the heart is love grown perfect like a shell over the beat of life is love perfect to the last so let it be the same whether we turn to the dark or to the kiss of another let us know this for leave-taking that i may not be heavy upon you that you may blind me no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain the maldive shark by herman melville read for LibriVox.org by amy kiner on april twenty third twenty seventeen at poets.org about the shark phlegmatical one pale salt of the maldive sea the sleek little pilot fish is zur and slim how alert in attendance be from his saw pit of mouth from his charnel of maw they have nothing of harm to dread but liquidly glide on his ghastly flank or before his gorgonian head or lurk in the port of serrated teeth in white triple tiers of glittering gates and there find a haven when perils abroad and asylum in jaws of the fates they are friends and friendly they guide him to pray yet never partake of the treat eyes and brains to the dodar lethargic and dull pale ravener of horrible meat end of poem this recording is in the public domain Marriage by Mary Weston Fordham Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist The die is cast, come weal, come woe Two lives are joined together, for better or for worse The link which naught but death can sever The die is cast, come grief, come joy, come richer or come poorer If love but binds the mystic tie, blessed is the bridal hour End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. May by Christina Rossetti. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. I cannot tell you how it was, but this I know. It came to pass upon a bright and sunny day when May was young. Ah, pleasant May. As yet the poppies were not born Between the blades of tender corn. The last egg had not hatched as yet, Nor any bird foregone its mate. I cannot tell you what it was, But this I know. It did but pass. It passed away with sunny May. Like all sweet things, it passed away, And left me old and cold and grey end of poem this recording is in the public domain minahaha by coates kinney read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter ere the muse is transatlantic pale of face and blue of eye found the wilderness romantic neath the occidental sky Think not, then, was here no worship of the beautiful and grand. Think not nature had no wooers in the wild Hesperian land. Posy, a greastic maiden, wild-eyed, black-haired, haunted here, singing of the Indian Aden, southwest of this mortal sphere, singing of the good great spirit who is in and over all, singing sweetly every river, mountain, wood, and waterfall. And this dark Parnassian maiden sang sublimely war's wild art, sang of love and lips love laden with the honey of the heart. But the war song's frantic music, and the death song's roundelay, and the love song's rude cantata, westward, westward die away. These will with the red tribes perish, 
for the language leaves nor scroll nor tradition writ to cherish such immortalness of soul so the names that they have given to the charms of nature here stream cascade lake hill and valley let us fervently revere for though civil life effaces all else they have gloried in yet this poetry of places will remind us they have been therefore white man pioneering far and farther in the west let the indian names be sacred though thou ravage all the rest call not cataracted rapid that has leaped its way and riven by his own name curt and vapid that some saxon boar has given but let nature keep her titles let her name the quick cascade minahaha laughing water in the language she has made minahaha how it gushes like a flow of laughter out minahaha how it rushes downward with a gleeful shout minahaha to the echoes minahaha back the same minahaha minahaha live forever that sweet name End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Never Give All the Heart by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Keo Blanchett. Never give all the heart, for love will hardly seem worth thinking of. To passionate women, if it seems certain and in never dream that it fades out from kiss to kiss. For everything that's lovely is but a brief, dreamy, kind delight. Oh, never give the heart outright, for they, for all smooth lips can say, have given their hearts up to the play. And who could play it well enough, if deaf and dumb and blind with love? He that made this knows all the cost, for he gave all his heart and lost. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode 1, from Ame Kusrao Idilabi, Odes 1-60, to translated by A. O. Qureshi. This is a LibriVox recording by Hatton43, blog de la quinzaine.wordpress.com. The clouds are pouring, and I am being separated from my sweetheart. How can I sever my heart from my beloved on such a day? The clouds are pouring, and myself and my beloved are standing to bid farewell. I am weeping on one side, the clouds on another, and the mistress on a third. The verdure is peeping up, the air is delicious, the garden is fresh and green, and the nightingale, with a blackened face, becomes disunited from the rose garden. O thou, under every fold of whose locks there are ties for me! Why do you cut me up entirely, joint from joint? O thou, the pupil of my eye, my eyes have become blood-pouring on thy account. Act with humanity, and don't separate thyself from my blood-pouring eyes. I do not wish the boon of eyesight to remain any longer when once the eye is deprived of that dainty sight. Thy arrows have filled my eyes with a hundred holes. Take up quickly a little dust from thy path. Here, I pay up my life, do not leave me. If you don't believe me, Take it, if you like, even in advance, and keep it apart. When once you separate yourself from Kusrau, your beauty would not long remain. The rose does not survive very long when it is separated from the thorn. End of recording. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 11 by Abid from the Diwans of Abid ibn al-Abras of Asad, and Ame ibn Ad-Tufal of Ame ibn Sasa, translated by Sir Charles Lyle. This is a LibriVox recording by Hatton43, blog de la quinzaine.wordpress.com. Still to see are the traces at ad Dafin, and in the sand slope of Dawa, the sides of Uthal. Al-Mararat and as are empty. Every valley and meadow, once full of people, the abode of a tribe who passed time as smitten, their dwellings show now like patterns on sword-sheaths, desolate all, 
save for ashes extinguished, and leavings of rubbish and ridges of shelters, shreds of tethering ropes and a trench round the tent place, and lines plotted out, changed by long years' lapse. Instead of their folk now, ostriches dwell there, red-shanked, driving on the troops of their younglings and gazelles that stand like ewers of silver, bending downwards to tend their fawns by their side. This is my wife. In her wrath she seeks to be rid of me. Is it that she desires divorce, or is feigning? If thy mind be on feigning coyness, why didst thou jest not thus in times past, the nights long vanished? Fair wast thou as an oryx, then, I thy bondsman, drunk with love, trailing skirts, I sought thy bower. So now leave off thy frowning, live with me peaceably. Hope remains for us yet, yet may we be happy. But if severance be thy desire, then what more needs it than to turn elsewhere the breasts of thy camels? She will have it that I am old and decrepit, reft of wealth, and my cousin's too stingy to help me. Youth's lightness all soured, my hair gone hoary, not a fit mate for her, the young and mirthful. If she finds me now pale, youth's colour vanished, greyness spread over brow and cheek and temple. Time was when I entered a tent to find there, one slender of waist, soft of skin, a gazelle. Round her neck went my arms, and toward me she bent her, as the sandhill slopes down to the sands below it. Then said she, My soul be ransom for thy soul. All my wealth be a gift from me to thy people. Leave the censurers, then, and get thee some wisdom. Let not them weigh against me in thy affection, or against all our life together, nor follow silly preachings intended to cause thee terror. Some there be of them niggards, and some mere paupers, others misers intent to grasp thy substance. Leave the herd, then, to fall to the share of Zaid's people. In Kataibat be they, or in Oral. They were not one in foray, nor did our war steeds wear points of their shoes in driving them homewards. Oh, how goodly is youth, the day of the black locks, when the camels step briskly under the harness, when the long-necked steeds, spare like arrows of Shauhat, bear the warriors, heavy with arms and armour. Oft of old did I fright herds of deer with a prancer, like a young buck in swiftness full of spirit, not hump-nosed, nor wont to knock hocks together, no, his hoofs hammer mightily, quicker his changes. Foremost he of a thousand, bearing as birth and knight in armour and helm, comes home like a picture. Swift as straight-feathered shaft, of Shauhat his onset. Shot with skill by an archer, cunning in bowcraft. Cutting down deer and ostrich, reaving the camels of a herdsman who dwells far away from his people. Yea, in time was I led the host on a war mare, short of hair, good in hand, to wheel or to race. Me she shielded with throat, and I with my spear play shielded her from the lances that men couched at us. Oft of old did I traverse deserts and sand dunes, borne aloft on a camel noble and fleet, great of frame, strong and swift, like a wild bull roaming, whom a night full of rain has pent in the valley. All her flesh I wore down with journeyings ceaseless. At the end of our travel she was as lean as the new moon. Such was life when I loved it. All now is vanished. All our lives thus sink into ashes and emptiness. End of poem 11. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 16 by Abid from the Diwans of Abid ibn al-Abras of Asad and Amir ibn At-Tufal of Amir ibn Sasar translated by Sir Charles Lyle. This is a LibriVox recording by Hatton 43 blog de la quinzaine.wordpress.com Whose are the abodes in the gravelly plain of Rauhan? Worn are they. The destroying hand of time has changed them. I stayed there in my camel that I might ask of the traces, and as I turned away, mine eyes gushed forth with tears. A copious stream, as though on a sudden burst from my lids a shower of rain, such as falls unawares from a winter cloud. I thought how had dwelt there my kin, the best of all men not kingly to the famine-stricken, the wretched and the captive in sorest need, and goodly gamers over the slaughtered camel. What time the wintry wind was blowing, and the strangers were gathered in. 
But when spear play was the business that they had in hand, then died they, deep in blood, the upper third of their shafts. And when it was time for the smiting of swords, behold them then, like lions that bend above their whelps and repel the foe. And when men shouted down to the footfight, then did they do on the mail coat sample, that fall in folds as far as the knees. Now I remain, they are gone, and I too must pass away. Change upon change, that is life, and colour to colour succeeds. God knows how they came to their end. I know not. All that is left for me is remembrance of things lost. When and where, he knows. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Queen Anne's Lace by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Her body is not so white as anemone petals, nor so smooth, nor so remote a thing. It is a field of the wild carrot taking the field by force. The grass does not raise above it. Here is no question of whiteness, white as can be with a purple mole at the centre of each flower. Each flower is a hand's span of her whiteness. Wherever his hand is lain, there is a tiny purple blemish. Each part is a blossom under his touch, to which the fibres of her being stem one by one, each to its end, until the whole field is a white desire, empty, a single stem, a cluster, flower by flower, a pious wish to whiteness gone over or nothing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rosalie by Washington Alston Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter O oh, pour upon my soul again that sad unearthly strain that seems from other worlds to play Thus falling, falling from afar, As if some melancholy star Had mingled with her light her sighs And dropped them from the skies. No, never came from aught below This melody of woe That makes my heart to overflow As from a thousand gushing springs Unknown before, That with it brings this nameless light, If light it be, That veils the world I see. For all I see around me wears the hue of other spheres, And something blent of smiles and tears Comes from the very air I breathe. O oh, nothing sure the stars beneath Can mould a sadness like to this, So like angelic bliss. So, at that dreamy hour of day, When the last lingering ray Stops on the highest cloud to play, So thought the gentle Rosalie, is on her maiden reverie, first fell the strain of him who stole in music to her soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Shipwreck by Mary Weston Fordham. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Night and a starless sky, ship on wild billows tossed. With tattered sails and opening seams, And deck bestrewn with falling beams, Swift plunging to her doom. Red lightnings round her flash, Loud thunders crash and roar, And the noble vessel mounts the crest Of the reeking waves, then sinks to rest, Mid carnival of woe. The petrel soars aloft, Wailing her hymn of death, and the dirge-like sounds pierce the blackened sky while the crew send forth one anguished cry sinking to lowest depth some ships go out to sea that never more return souls that from heaven in infancy come tarnished and ruined by sin may become like the dove to the ark they never return but sink as ship to doom End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Le siècle by john clark ridpath read for LibriVox.org by sonia le siècle the century passes as a broken dream that fades into the darkness ere the dawn the hopes it cherished and its griefs are gone as spirit shadows on time's silent stream the outcry and the anguish of it seem like echoes on dusk hills like lights upon the haunted borders of oblivion pale will-o'-wisps of a disordered scheme o thou new age that comest welcome thrice more welcome than the ever welcome birth of the expected love-child of our youth bring us a nobler portion nobler twice than ever yet was given unto earth bring us our freedom bring us love and truth End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sleep, Mother, Sleep by Anonymous. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Sleep, Mother, Sleep. Catherine Shepherd, an elder of the Northern District Monthly Meeting, died the 15th of 12th month, 1842, aged 80 years. The following lines appeared a few days after in one of the daily papers on the occasion of her death. Sleep, mother, sleep, for thy work is now done. Thy course is accomplished, the victory won. Doubts and fears can no longer arise in thy path, nor tempest cloud hover with threatening wrath. Sleep, mother, sleep, our protector and guide, Though we fain would have turned all death's arrows aside, Though we clung to thee fondly, and watched every breath, Thy spirit unnoticed departed with death. Ah, cruel destroyer, but seize ye, and hear, What sounds of sweet melody break on the ear. Tis the voice of rejoicing, O oh, listen the sound, That the prisoner of hope from the earth is unbound. There! Hearken once more to the full swelling strain, The words of rejoicing we even may name. They say, Come up here, see the bride of the Lamb, That stands by the throne of the mighty I am. Come home, mother, come, ah, how vain is that cry, The home of the righteous is fixed in the sky. Earth's treasures wax old, its attractions all wither, the cry of the ransomed is come ye up hither end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet silence by thomas hood read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk there is a silence where hath been no sound there is a silence where no sound may be in the cold grave under the deep deep sea or in a wide desert where no life is found which hath been mute and still must sleep profound no voice is hushed no life treads silently but clouds and cloudy shadows wander free that never spoke over the idle ground but in green ruins in the desolate walls of antique palaces where man hath been though the dun fox or wild hyena calls and owls that flit continually between shriek to the echo and the low winds moan there the true silence is self-conscious and alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sonnet by dante gabriel rossetti Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King A sonnet is a moment's monument 
Memorial from the soul's eternity To one dead deathless hour. Look that it be, whether for lustral rite Or dire portent, of its own arduous fullness reverent. Carve it in ivory, or in ebony, As day or night may rule, And let time see its flowering crest, Impearled and orient. A sonnet is a coin, Its face reveals the soul, Its converse to what power tis due, Whether for tribute to the august appeals of life, Or dower in love's high retinue it serve, Or, mid the dark wharf's cavernous breath, In Charon's palm it pay the toll of death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sorrow of Love by William Butler Yeats, read for LibriVox.org by Keo Blanchett. The quarrel of the sparrows in the eaves, the full round moon in the star laden sky, and the loud song of the ever singing leaves had hid away earth's old and weary cry. And then you came with those red mournful lips, and with you came the whole of the world's tears, and all the sorrows of her laboring ships and all the burden of her myriad years. And now the sparrows warring in the eaves, the curd pale moon, the white stars in the sky, and the loud chanting of the unquiet leaves are shaking with earth's old and weary cry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tea Time by Emmy Veronica Sanders Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard The door creaks faintly, shutting out the gloom of the long dark hall. The child, tiptoeing, enters the large familiar room, filled with fragrance of roses and strong-flavored tea. From the tall elms that border the old canal through open windows, quietly filters the soft green dusk and the little orange flames under the spirit lamp flicker and play over the shining silver tea things on the lacquer tray the voice of the drowsy city sounds muffled and vague as if from very far with now and then the sharper rattle of a lumbering car over the cobblestones of the old vaulted bridge under the elm tree foliage the low barges lie moored with their deck loads of flowers and boxes and pots pansies heliotrope forget-me-nots and rows of purple fuchsia and colourless mignonettes and between the barges darkening silhouettes here and there you catch a gleam of the pale stagnant stream in the strong scents of flowers and damp earth and the rich golden fragrance of tea lingers a stale tepid odor of decay and death exhalations from the old canal and the city's feverish impure summer breath and in the peace of the old dusk-filled room a sudden longing poignantly seizes the child for dimly visioned beauty undefiled in dimly visioned worlds that strangely loom on far horizons end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a child embracing his mother by thomas hood read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk love thy mother little one kiss and clasp her neck again hereafter she may have a son will kiss and clasp her neck in vain love thy mother little one gaze upon her living eyes and mirror back her love for thee hereafter thou mayst shudder sighs to meet them when they cannot see 
gaze upon her living eyes press her lips the while they glow with love that they have often told hereafter thou mayst press in woe and kiss them till thine own are cold press her lips the while they glow oh revere her raven hair although it be not silver gray too early death led on by care may snatch save one dear lock away oh revere her raven hair pray for her at eve and morn that heaven may long the stroke defer for thou mayst live the hour forlorn when thou wilt ask to die with her pray for her at eve and morn end of poem this recording is in the public domain to mary by samuel lover read for LibriVox.org by melanie t as in the calmest day the pine tree gives a soft low murmur to the wooing wind when other trees are silent so love lives in the close covert of the loftier mind responding to the gentlest sigh would wake love's answer and his magic music make twas thus i wooed thee softly and afraid for no rude breath could win response from thee mine own retiring timid bashful maid and hence i dedicate the slender tree to dearest memories of the tenting fine i wooed thee with as zephyr woos the pine and hence i love with thee through woods to wander whose fairy flowers thy sight foot scarcely bends growing as time steals o'er us only fonder following mayhap some streamlet as it tends to a lone lake full as our hearts and calm o'er which the opening summer sheds its balm soft is the breeze so soft the very lake hath not a ripple on its mirror face and hence a double beauty doth it make another forest in its depths we trace the skies repeated in reflected kiss so loving hearts can double every bliss the sun is high we seek refreshing shade beneath the pines we choose a flowery seat and while a whisper in their boughs is made couching with fondness at thy tiny feet i'll whisper thee while sheltering from the sun sweet mary thus i wooed thee thus i won end of poem this recording is in the public domain the young man's song by william butler yeats read for LibriVox.org by keo blanchett i whispered i am too young and then i am old enough wherefore i threw a penny to find out if i might love go and love go and love young man if the lady be young and fair ah penny brown penny brown penny i am looped in the loops of her hair oh love is the crooked thing there is nobody wise enough to find out all that is in it for he would be thinking of love till the stars had run away and the shadows eaten the moon ah penny brown penny brown penny one cannot begin it too soon end of poem this recording is in the public domain <laughs>